Welcome everyone to Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Today's message is called Working for a Living or Working to Make a Difference. Now, allowing Him to be the Lord of our daily lives. When we allow the Lord to be the Lord of our daily lives, that means that we allow Him to guide us every single day when we wake up. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23, it says, Whatever you do, work it with all of your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Now, how many want to go to a doctor that he's working with half of his heart? A doctor that's going to do a foot surgery. You want him to go half-heartedly? Well, my shift's almost over. I guess we could half it. Right? The people who were laying down the pipes in front of Pearl Road, 4316 Pearl Road, the city workers who laid down the pipe, right? They only had one job, was to dig a hole, put the pipe in the hole, and put concrete over it, right? And so they tore up the road, disturbing the businesses, disrupting them. They tore up the road, they dropped the pipe, they put the concrete in, and they forgot the rebar. <laughs> you only had one job. Right? And now you can say, well, anyone can make a mistake. True. But the people who make mistakes, I saw them on the other side of the road on the library laying down like they were at the beach in the Bahamas. They were playing around, laying down, uh, playing with grass and making little whistles for hours and hours and hours. And probably nothing came to their mind. Why do we have so much free time? Why? And so, so these guys, they, 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 they dug up the fresh concrete from gyro guys down to the church, and they, they halved it. And then they drilled holes through the concrete and put the rebar in, and then they poured the concrete back. It's, they didn't even do it the right way. Now, you can call me a prophet if you will, but I'm going to prophesy. That concrete's not going to last very long. It's not going to be long before there's huge swimming hole potholes and maybe that's a blessing. We can make swimming holes or swimming pools out in front of Pearl Road and make a thing. Hire a lifeguard. <laughs> These people, they're, they're working to make a living. They're not doing it with their whole heart. And you can tell it makes a difference. And so us, for the, the wiser generation, the people of God, the children of God, it is our responsibility to work to make a difference, Amen. right? It's our responsibility and our obligation to teach the younger generations because work ethic is not a gift. Work ethic does not come natural. Work ethic has to be taught and it has to be seen by an example. And the way that you work is a direct response and a reaction to those who work before you, those who trained you, those who showed you how to show up on time, those who showed you how to have a good attitude, those who taught you the skills, and that's where your work ethic or lack of came from. And the people that are coming underneath you, they're going to do what you do. Whatever you do, work at it with your whole heart, with your whole heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Now check this out. When I first became a Christian, this message really got me through tough times. Why? Because I had some tough jobs. 
And there were times where I would show up to work and I would be paid minimum wage. I would only get a few hours. And the people who were supposed to be tipping me that I was taking care of with a good attitude, they would throw pennies at me. Literally throw pennies at me. And I had to remind myself this scripture, I'm not working. I'm not working for money. I'm not working for people. I'm not working for myself. I'm working for the Lord. And therefore, I was able to show up the next day. Because if I was working for people and they threw pennies at me, something ungodly would have came out of me. If I was working for the people, something bad would have happened. If I was working for myself, I wouldn't have treated them so kind in return. But how many of you know that God promoted me from that place to the next place and God was constantly promoting me, I believe, not because I was so awesome, but because I was doing it unto the Lord. And I'm going to tell you the people who are working for other people, the people who are working for themselves, the people who are working for money, they are never going to be satisfied. There's always going to come a point in time where the people aren't worth it, uh, you, you give up, you get tired yourself, and the money just doesn't satisfy you anymore. If there's going to be a short road ahead if you're working for those reasons. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 it says, again it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. And to one gave five bags of gold and to another two bags and to another one bag. And each according to his ability. And then he went on his journey. And the man who received five bags of gold went at once. And he put his money to work and gained five bags more. And that's what God wants us to do. This person right here that had the five bags, he was working unto the Lord. I don't even believe he was chasing after money. I learned this one thing. The, I, I look at people who are money hungry, greedy, and they're chasing after money. It's like the more they chase after it, the more it runs from you. The more they look for money and the more greedy they are, the less money they get. And the more it runs from them. And then a lot of times the people that aren't even looking for money, aren't even living for money, the money just comes to them. See, God gives us not always what we want, but what we need. And we need to see the true value and the purpose of what he has in our lives and what we're supposed to do with it and how we're supposed to do what we're supposed to do. And so this man that had the five, gold, five bags, he got five bags more. Why? Because he was working to make a difference. Five plus five equals ten. Right? Five and ten, there's something different about that, right? See, there should be something different about your life when God came unto you and gave you five bags of gold. There should be something different about you. You should be making changes in your life and in the lives of those around you. Amen? Amen. How many of you ever been to a place and you, you went to a restaurant and the, 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 the waitress or the waiter, they were just running. They had a good attitude. They asked you how your food was. Do you want something more? Is there anything I can do for you? They were friendly. And you can tell there was something special about them. And it made you want to go back and tell other people about this place that has great service. In fact, if you ever look at the reviews online about restaurants, one of the, the categories is, yes, how good is the food? That's important. But another category that's equally as important is how good was the service? Because you can give someone the best food in the world and then just dump it on them, right? Right? Or you're so nasty to them with such a bad attitude, you cause them to lose their appetite and you destroy the atmosphere. So the service that you get is equally as important as the quality of the food. And we have to remember that too, that when we are working, we are working to make a... Difference. Amen. <laughs> working for a living or... Working to make a difference. Pray before action. Someone said, you preach on this already, Pastor. 
yeah, but are you doing it yet? <laughs> Maybe we're not doing it the way we're supposed to be doing it. You have to pray before you do things. See, an animal just does things out of, they call it intrinsic. Their, their nature, they just do certain things without thinking. That's the difference between a human being, a man and woman of God, and an unbeliever, is that we are supposed to ponder our ways before we go through them. We're supposed to go before the Lord and pray before we do certain things. We have to invite the Lord into whatever it is we're doing, especially... Major choices. In Mark chapter 1 verses 35. It says very early in the morning. While it was still dark. Jesus got up. And he left the house. And went off. To solitary place. To a solitary place. Where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him. They exclaimed. Everyone is looking for you. See, it says that Simon and his companions, they went to look for Jesus. They couldn't find him. You know why? Because they were looking for Jesus with all the large groups of people. Well, surely that wherever there's huge groups of people, Jesus has to be there. Why? Just because there's a lot of people there, he's got to be there. That's going to be my first place that I'm going to look, where there's large groups of people. And that is the thought process of people. Uh, last Wednesday, they had 1.3 million going down to honor and congratulate the calves. There was 1.3 million people minus me. I'm not going down there. I don't care if the whole world goes down there. I'm not going down there. I, I, God bless them. I hope they had a good time. I'm sorry for the woman that got shot. Knowing, my, knowing me, if, if, if I would have went down there, I probably would have been the one that got shot. Everyone else would have had a good old time. <laughs> we have to go where Jesus is at. And it says that Jesus had to get away from the people to pray. Sometimes, in order for us to make a difference and not just a living Sometimes we have to get away from people. Sometimes the problem is not you. It's people. And we have to get away from them so that we could go before the Lord. We have to stop listening to the voices of the people and start listening to the voices of the, the voice of the Lord. Amen? Amen? They got a TV show called The Voice. And that's okay. But it's not God. I want to listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. 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 In Mark chapter 1 verses 38 and 39 it says, Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. He traveled throughout Galilee preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. You know what I'm getting from this? Before Jesus was preaching, he did what? He prayed. Before Jesus preached, he prayed. Before Jesus took action, he prayed. Before we do certain things, we should pray. Amen? There was a time where I had a rough job and actually, let me take that back. It wasn't the job that was rough. It was the people or the person that was rough. I had a mean manager. And to this day, we're still good friends. But she was mean, like bulldog mean, angry mean. And she would throw pens at me, throw, throw uh, screwdrivers at me. And she was mean. She always talked down on me. She made sure to remind me often, frequently, that she was the manager and I was the apprentice. And she wanted to remind me to make sure that I had my apprentice tag on my shirt. And as soon as she turned her back, I would put it right back in my pocket. Because when people came to look at me, uh, the customers or the patients, they wouldn't stare at me. They would stare at my apprentice tag. <laughs> And I remember being so frustrated and so challenged by this job. I remember saying, God, 
God, I, I thank you for this job. I appreciate it. I love the job. But the people that I work with, they're really giving me a rough time. Lord, I hate this situation. Please do something. And I cried out to the Lord, almost in tears on the way to work. I prayed. And by the time I got into work, the manager came into me. And the first thing she did is, I'm sorry the way I've been treated. She apologized. And not only did she apologize, she changed her whole attitude towards me changed. Her whole demeanor changed. And she even thanked me. She said, you're the only voice of reason that I've had over the last three months. And so I was working there not to make a living, but to make a difference. And the difference started with me first. I had to be honest in prayer and tell the Lord that I hated the situation. Sometimes we don't make a difference because we don't change ourselves. And we don't get real with God ourselves. And then when we get real with God, God gets real with us. Amen. And this woman, she changed her, her heart, her attitude, everything. And it says that, so he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. How many of you know when you drive out demons, you're going to make a difference? Amen. When you're driving out demons, you are making a difference. Amen. And how many of you know that God gave us the power to drive out demons? How many believe that? God gave us the power and the authority over the enemy. And you have to remember that. When you go on to your job and you go to wherever you're going, remember that God gave you authority over the enemy. And you know some of your co-workers are demon-possessed. They're demon-possessed. They're, 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 they're everything but shy of their head spinning around and foam coming out of their mouth. They're everything but shy of that. The next thing you know, they'll be on the ceiling floating with their head spinning around and growling at you. They're just, they're almost there. But God gave you authority over that. Amen? Amen? A mind to work. In order for you to make a difference, you have to have a mind to work. And back to what we were saying before, why are you motivated to work? What motivates you to work? Is it the motivation that comes from the Holy Spirit? Or is it the motivation that comes from the flesh? Remember, it's a matter of time before the flesh gets tired and we have to depend on the motivation of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. How many believe that this generation uh, growing up now has a mind to work? Some do, some don't. How many believe that our government is helping this growing generation to have a mind to work? Or do you believe that the government is hurting their mind to work? See, when you provide everything to everyone and make it too easy, you lose their desire and their motivation to work. When things come too easy, it comes with a cost. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 22, it says, The man with two bags of gold also came master, and it came master, he said, You entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. He had a mind to work. He had a mind to go out and apply what God has given him. And I'm going to tell you, every single person here, you might not be the one that was given five golds, bags of gold. You might be the one that was given two bags of gold. But if you have a mind to work, it doesn't matter how much you were given because if you give it unto the Lord and, and apply yourself as unto the Lord, you can make a difference. And sometimes people say, well, I'm not going to try... Because my neighbor has five bags and I got two bags. And then they take on a victim mentality. We can't do that. We have to have a victor mentality. It doesn't matter whether I have five bags. It doesn't matter whether I have two bags, one bag, a half a bag, or one coin. With God I can do all things. Amen. And I can be victorious. His master replied, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. That's a principle that we need to learn and that we need to teach the children is that if you're faithful over little, God can make you a ruler over much. Not to be focused and obsessed with the little that they're doing. How many went to Burger King or McDonald's or some restaurant and the person didn't even say hi to you? Didn't even greet you? 
I mean, this, this is bare minimum communication skills. Sometimes when you go into places of business, you can tell some people they're there, they're like zombies. They're like zombies, just mindless zombies. And, and, and it's, why are they like mindless zombies? Because they don't care about their job. And their attitude is that they're doing the customer a favor for their presence of being there. Rather than the customer doing them a favor by contributing to the business that pays their paycheck, they don't think like that. And before I was a Christian, I didn't have a mind to work. I wanted to do as little as possible. To, I just wanted to live. I didn't want to make a difference. I didn't care about making a difference. Before I was a Christian, I only wanted to live. I wanted to make a living. I wanted to get paid. And I wanted to do as little as possible in order to get paid. I wanted to do as little as possible and make as much as possible. I remember when I was a young whippersnapper and I had the, the paper boy delivery route and I had all these big old huge bags of newspapers and I was struggling on my bicycle. I maybe weighed about 80 pounds. The paper weighed more than me. And I remember if I went to one side, I would tip over and I got about halfway through the route. And that last customer... They got all the newspapers. I put the whole sack on their doorstep and I was gone. Why? Because I didn't have a mind to work. I remember other jobs that I used to work at. Construction jobs. The whole crew. We would take two, three, four. My, my supervisor would tell us to take two, three hour breaks to milk the job. Union carpenter. They didn't have a mind to work. It was to do as little as possible. I don't want people, people that take care of me, that they can't say hi to me, it makes me nervous. People that, that, that they take care of me, when I go to restaurants and they won't even say hi to me, you've already lost my trust. Now I don't know what you're going to put in my food. <laughs> if you can't even say hi to me, now I'm wondering, do you not like me? Is it my bald head? My, what, is there something wrong? You know, why, why can't you say hi to me? What's going on? And so I try to make an effort when I come across the zombie mind. And it's usually not that the people are zombies. It's just when they're at work, they're a zombie. Probably if you catch them at home, they're probably all excited. Yeah! LeBron James! You know, they're probably all enthusiastic. But when they're at their job, they're not into it. Their heart's not there. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to make a joke. You know, I'll try to break them out of that zombie mentality. I'll try to make small talk with them just to bring out that human heart and that mind. You ever do that with someone? They, they're, they're like, just there's nothing there, a blank spirit, uh, a deer in the headlights, they're just staring at you, and then you just want to make a joke just to get them to break up their day? Yeah. That's making a difference. It's a small thing, but it's still making a difference. Amen? In Proverbs 6, 6, it says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it still stores provisions in the summer and gathers food in the harvest. And that's how we should be as Christians. If we're going to make a difference, we shouldn't need our supervisor or our boss hounding us all day long to get us to do what we already know to do. We should do it through integrity. We should do it through motivation of the Holy Spirit just to want to do the right thing. And believe me, when you live that way, you're going to be more satisfied. You're going to have more joy. You're going to have more peace. You're going to be more fulfilled, and you're not going to just be like a mindless zombie going to work every day. That's a miserable way to work. You should love what you do. And if you don't love what you do, find something that you do love what you do. I don't care if you go out and dig worms for a living. At least love what you do and have a passion about it. I watched that one show on uh, TV called Dirty Jobs or whatever. They would go out and dig worms, and they would fight with each other, but they, they were laughing, they were family, they loved it. Go out and dig worms, but love, don't complain. If you don't like your job at McDonald's, then go somewhere else. Nobody's forcing you to be there. But that's what happens. The devil wants to entrap people's minds and make them feel like they have no choice and that they're forced to be there. No. With God, you can do all things. 
I remember people coming into my job not that long ago, and they felt so ashamed and so embarrassed that they didn't have enough money to buy some of the nicer things that we offer at my job. And I could feel the shame and the embarrassment on them. You know what I did? I said, you know what, that's okay. You know what, right now you might be poor, you might be struggling right now. I said, God can change your situation. You might not be able to afford it today, but maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, God can change your situation. If little things, we can encourage people. Now, I didn't have to do all that. I could have just said, you poor, no good, good for nothing. You know, get out of it. <laughs> I didn't do that. I could have, though. But I also could have encouraged them to make a difference. Amen? Acknowledge death in the body as a reality. The reason why I have this here is because if you realize that you're not going to live forever, at one point in time you're going to die, you're going to make it a good go around. Some people, they feel like, they feel like they're going to live forever or they're never going to die. And therefore, they don't do things with their whole heart. But if you know your time is limited, what happens if someone comes up to you and says, you have one year to live? You're going to make the best out of that one year, right? Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, your life might not be one year, but it's only as a vapor, which means it goes by fast. So make it a good go around. Amen? Making excuses prevents us from making a difference. We can't live our life making excuses for why we're not accelerating. We can't make excuses for why we're not thriving. Rather, let's make excuses for how to succeed rather than not. Amen? Overcoming fear in this world makes a difference in achieving. Some people never make a difference in this life because they're bound by fear. Fear dictates their choices and fear controls what they do. But if you're not fearful, you'll be able to step out. Any person who has ever succeeded in this world, they had to step out in faith. They had to take risks. And the people who never get anywhere, it's because their fear prevents them from achieving and making a difference. And sometimes people are afraid because they failed in the past or they got hurt in the past. But how many of you know that you have to forgive yourself? You have to forgive other people so that you could overcome that. Amen? Do not procrastinate what could be performed today. That's how you make a difference. Do not procrastinate what can be performed today. Amen? We must live with a desire to glorify God. Amen. That should be our number one desire that we're living not to please ourselves, not to please people, but to please God. That's the best way to live our lives. Obedience to God is always makes a difference. Obedience to God always makes a difference. So in other words, God will tell you and guide you in specific situations of what to do. And if you don't do it, you'll just be living. If you do it, a difference will take place. Amen? In John chapter 14, verses 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. What's that mean? That means that Jesus died on the cross. He went into the grave. He rose from the grave. And when he snatched back the keys from Satan... He went up to his father and he sent the Holy Spirit to the children of God. And in that Holy Spirit, we're able to do what Jesus did. And Jesus even said, we'll even do greater. What does that mean? That means that we are called to make a difference. Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. 